Hey, Philip, how are you? Hello, Chris. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Hello everyone and welcome to the global presentation of the IWC Pilots Chronograph Edition AMG. My name is Chris Granger and I'm speaking to you from the heart of our manufacturing center here in Schaffhausen, Switzerland. Now, IWC's relationship with automotive engineering runs really deep and that really goes all the way back to our history. Our American founder, Florentine Arista Jones, was an engineer and a watchmaker and he came to Schaffhausen from Boston to set up the first centralized watchmaking in Switzerland and combine the best of technology and craftsmanship to make the best pocket watch movements in the market. And today we really are the engineers of fine watchmaking that runs deep on our DNA. And that also has something to do with our unique location here in the east of Switzerland. We are removed from the Western Valley of Switzerland, much closer to the German automotive industry, just up the road. Now we've been long-standing partners with Mercedes AMG, and there's only a short one hour motorway run that's connecting us to Affalterbach, the home of AMG. And I'm very, very happy and proud to welcome AMG CEO, Mr. Philip Schima to the webcast as well. Philip, how are you? Thanks, Chris. Welcome to everybody. Uh, welcome from Affalterbach, the heart of AMG. And uh, I'm very happy and pleased to be part of this special event. Uh, and I'm really looking forward to it. So, Philip, our partnership started in 2004, 17 years, starting with the first engineer collection AMG, various AMG special edition models over the years, cockpit clocks, special edition watches, and of course, a lot of exciting racing projects and driving experiences as well. How do you feel about our partnership so far and what's yet to come? Yeah, Chris, as you mentioned, IWC is our longest standing partner over 17 years. I think this is not not usual in the industry. And I think the reason why is because we are sharing the same values. Both IWC and Mercedes-AMG are technology-driven companies and uh, we both share the same passion. We look out for handicraft precision technology and outstanding craftsmanship on the very highest level. And uh, both of us also, we are creating very emotional products that connect our customers to our product. It's uh, on the IWC, you're not just looking the time. You want us to have a smile on your face when you look at the watch. And it's the same with uh, driving in an AMG. Uh, when you enter into the car, you're not thinking where you go. You are enjoying your ride. And I think those uh, shared values, these are the creating the best products. And therefore, I believe that we have a lot of things in our front still. One thing that always strikes me, Philip, is this relationship between the high precision machine, but the human element. You know, when you think about watchmaking, yes, there is ultra precision CNC machining in all of the components, but in the end, it's a watchmaker and he and she breathes the final bit of life into the watch movement in the final assembly in regulating the mainspring. And that's very much uh, in your philosophy as well, because you have that slogan, one man, one engine. And despite all of the precision engineering and R&D that goes into your engines, in the end, it's a human uh, touch and it's a human being that does the entire assembly start to finish. So how is that important to deliver a quality and performance in the end? At the end, it's, uh, I think we are, we are selling to our customer uh, first of all, a dream, but also real craftsmanship. And I think the, our customers, they want to have something personalized. They want to have a relation to our products. And there the concept, one man, one engine, plays a central role. Because everybody knows who is the specialist who built up his engine. And we see this with a lot of customers coming to our production site here in Affalterbach, wanting to have a look on that. And I think uh, this is uh, very important. As uh, IWC, we have a long history. We were born on the racetrack né? and we try to bring this philosophy um, to the roads. And there also in the racetrack, you are dependent on your mechanics. It's not just the driver, it's the mechanics, it's the whole team. And I think when a customer comes to us and buys an AMG, he especially get, uh, gets this feeling. 
Yeah, let's speak about luxury performance a minute. I think it very much resonates with the history of RWC and especially the pilot's watches. When you think about the 85-year legacy of our pilot's watches, they were designed for a single purpose. It was mostly a purely functional briefing that was at the very origin of those watches. But over time, designs like the Mark 11 for the Royal Air Force in 1948 became design icons of modern sports watch design. And of course, today they are much more than just being a watch for pilots. They are tested in extreme conditions by professional aviators, but in the end are enjoyed by a much wider target audience. And I think this very much relates to your concept of modern luxury performance, doesn't it, Philip? Yeah, exactly. Uh, as we said before, our cars were born on the racetrack and they are tested under extreme conditions with the best drivers we can find and we are pushing our cars to the limit. And this technology afterwards comes to the street and our customer, even if he never uh, reaches those levels, he can be sure that our uh, car stands uh, really the, the highest, uh, the highest uh, performance and the highest uh, challenge he will ever put on, on, on his car. And this is, this is really uh, especially important. Look at the Black Series. Here we are also using the most sophisticated materials like titanium. The same is true for the, for the Project One. And I think you find the same materials also in your watches. So here we also have a, a very strong relationship. And on the other side, we know also for the future, uh, we have to develop even f further. No? We cannot stand still. So the future will be electrified and we are entering in this uh, 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 generation of vehicles now. And uh, so I think the, the challenges and the technical challenges that we have ahead, they will push us even further. And of course, we at IWC, we're immensely proud to be your partners in this time, which marks a huge technology transformation journey in the automotive industry, really from internal combustion to an electrified, more sustainable future. And for us, this is very close to our heart because we make products that are essentially designed to last forever, that are only powered by the energy of our clients' wrists or the energy of fingers winding a watch. And even the first manufacturing here in Schaffhausen was solely powered by the energy from the River Rhine. And today we still get all of our electricity from the hydropower station just a couple of miles down the road here, complemented by solar power. So I think we identify with this constant striving for sustainability in our supply chain, in our sourcing and everything that we do, and a very transparent way of communicating to our clients. So Philip, on your front, what is next now in terms of the next technological steps uh, in this journey for AMD? Yeah, we are in a huge transformation as well. Uh, and we set ourselves the goal of defining the future of driving performance and electrification for sure. The powertrain plays a central role in that. We are already demonstrating what is possible with the electrified powertrain in the Formula One. And we are bringing now this technology from Formula One to our street legal cars under the label e-performance. So we are trying to position the electrified powertrain as a performance powertrain, yeah, which will be first used in our Project One hypercar and afterwards comes to our serious cars. Our new customer generation, they are looking out for performance on the one side, but sustainability on the other side. And I think combining the both things, this uh, what we are calling uh, performance luxury and we want to be the leader in performance luxury. Yeah, and I think you're also pointing towards something very important that, you know, we're together, we're trying to find the journey where we don't compromise on technical prowess, we don't compromise on the luxury experience as well, but actually develop ways in which our products are getting more and more responsible over time. And again, Philip, we are extremely proud and happy to be part of this journey as a partner of Mercedes AMG. Right, so I guess this is a moment we've all been waiting for. Let's reveal the watch together. This is the new IWC Pilot's Watch Chronograph Edition AMG.
And there we have it, the all new IWC Pilot's Watch Chronograph Edition AMG, the first ever Pilot's Chronograph in 5N titanium. Now, titanium is a material directly derived from automotive engineering, a metal that's extremely hard, lightweight, and very, very scratch resistant indeed. We combine that with a first time in a 43 millimeter chronograph, our in-house 69 caliber, made and assembled right here in our manufacturing center in Schaffhausen. The watch has a darkened sapphire glass case back with the AMG logo printed on the back and we have a carbon fiber dial with contrasted silver arrow style sub counters reminiscent of a driver's cockpit section in the car. Of course, a grayed out dial graphics in AMG gray and an embossed calf leather strap. Now head over to iwc.com. You can check out all the details right now. Philip, there we have it. What do you think about the new watch? Really, Chris, it's amazing. Uh, I have it on my wrist already and I fast just delivery, love it. Fast delivery, fast delivery, Philip. <laughs> fast delivery, as expected, no? and uh, as expected from the collaboration IWC and, uh, and, and AMG. I'm impressed also about the materials you're using. As I told, titanium we are using, for example, in our Black Series in the rollover protection, the, in the cage. No? So, so it's a really uh, a, a material well known in our industry. And I think here, once again, we are showing, showing very well the combination. But what I like, it's really the perfect combination in the watch between on the one side, our motorsport, our performance, and on the other side, the lifestyle issue. This is a watch you want to, to have on your wrist every day. Absolutely. And let's talk a little bit about that Black Series car sitting just behind you there in Afalterbach. I think it is now time to welcome somebody who's very, very familiar with this car because yes. he incidentally smashed the lap record on the Nürburgring for production road cars in the AMG GT Black Series. It is no other than racing driver Maro Engel. Maro, a very warm welcome. How are you? Hi Chris, hi Philip, and thank you very much for having me. Um, I'm very well, and uh, I'm, I'm very impressed with this with this new watch. Um, it's it's simply amazing. Um, I love the materials. Uh, I love the look. Obviously, carbon fiber is a material that we're extremely familiar with in the racing world, but especially the titanium, uh, which is a material that uh, is so resistant, as you pointed out, and, and that we also use in the GT Black Series, as, as Philip just pointed out. It's fantastic to have. Personally, um, uh, you know, I, I do put the watches under quite a lot of stress, not only the cars, um, and, and being assured that uh, I have this high performance and um, reliability also on my wrist is something very special. Now you're obviously at home in the world of endurance racing. You've recently with your teammates actually won the Daytona 24 hours in the AMG GT3, which was an amazing uh, achievement. Endurance racing has place, places really unique demands onto the material, both inside and outside the car. Talk us through it a little bit, what that means in terms of engineering and performance to really put the car through its paces in endurance racing. Yeah, for sure. The you know the the surroundings of the of the interiors of a race car are are, are very demanding um, uh, on the driver, but um, on any material that's uh, that's within this surrounding on the car inside the car. So um, you know you're talking about the g-forces. You're talking about the uh, very warm temperatures. Obviously, there's no luxury of a of an air condition uh, in in uh, my race car. Every time we we hit a curb, a bump. Um, the forces going through the body, or in this instance, through the watch, um, is, uh, is, is, is unique. And um, again, uh, the focus obviously is having performance, um, but also that reliability. That's the, that's the key in endurance racing, is to be able to repeat that, that performance and to, to be sure you can push yourself, uh, the car, and in this case also the watch um, for 24 hours or, or as long as the endurance race may be. So it's, uh, it's a very special uh, surrounding and again um, I think that's where it's great to have this um, performance and precision engineering that uh, that both companies combine. Yeah and I had the privilege Maro that I was actually a passenger with you uh, taking me uh, around the racetrack in, in Monza and me holding on for dear life you, you doing a fine job at driving so I could see I mean the workload for for you drivers in the car is quite extreme as well and you are bashing your your, your watch around the cockpit quite a bit aren't you? I'll be totally honest with you, Chris. I, I bash my watch much more than I would like to. That's why um, I'm, I'm so thrilled to see this watch in titanium because um, it just gives you another edge. And I think um, a lot of people can probably relate to this, but uh, as a customer, just, just knowing you have that security and, and that, that safety is, is something very special. 
and Philip, just maybe a, a question to you. How important is it for people like Maro to uh, gain the experience they do with your cars in GT3 and endurance racing and then transferring that technology into cars like the GT Black Series? I think this is very important for us. No? Uh, as Maro mentioned, to win a 24-hour race, it's not one fast lap. It's one fast lap after the other for 24 hours. And therefore, you have really, you have to test your car in the, in the most severe conditions. And this transfer to our serious cars is happening. Né? And uh, so, for example, if you look at the brakes, if you look at our suspension, uh, this is all derived from, from, from racing and we ben benefit very much on it. And I think every customer feels it. If you enter into an AMG, you take your hands on the steering wheel, you already feel that there's something different in this car. And uh, this spirit comes directly from, uh, from, from the racetrack and at the end, for example, the GT Black Series, the last refinement always is done by racing drivers. Yeah, absolutely. And I think both for our cars and our watches, it gives us the good feeling to know that both these objects are engineered beyond what anybody is likely to uh, come across in, in everyday life. But at least, you know, you've got the ultimate backup and you've got ultimate engineering. So, Maro, I can see you're sitting in front of a racetrack. What's next for you? What's coming up? Yeah, we're uh, just about to embark on the Nürburgring 24 hours. So um, obviously one of the biggest races for us uh, in, in the season. Really looking forward to that race. It's an iconic race and obviously uh, on such an iconic track again. So uh, we'll be trying our best to uh, bring uh, AMG and IWC to the top once again. Well, Mauro, as king of the ring, I think you've proven that more than once. And I'm sure everybody at AMG will join me as well in wishing you the best of luck for the race and the season ahead. Thank you for being part of this. Philip, it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you over in Afalterbach. Thank you, Chris, for having me on, uh, at this great launch event. I am looking forward uh, to future projects and Maro, all the best at the Nürburgring. Uh, Maro, absolutely. I'm also looking forward to seeing the watch in titanium come back, probably a little more unscathed this time. Yeah, thank you, Chris. Thank you, Philip. Uh, it's been a pleasure. All the best. Super. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, everybody, for watching as well and talk to you all very, very soon.